Okay, this question is about um, fracture, and it's asking how much in millimeters does the specimen shrink in length. And what this depends on you knowing is that when you load it, load it just before fracture, the, the total strain here that is stored in the sample is a combination of elastic and plastic um, strain. So this being roughly um, 0 0.56 or 0.57, I'm going to call that 0 0.56 strain total. And that is, uh, that consists of a combination of strains. That total strain is a sum of the plastic or permanent strain and the elastic or temporary strain. And this elastic strain is the one that will that will be um, recovered when it breaks. Um, so uh, that's what we're trying to compute. And how do we get that? Well, we know the only equation that we have for the elastic strain is this one here, that the sigma is equal to Young's modulus times epsilon. And this, actually, it's implied. This is elastic strain. So um, whatever the load is, the elastic strain will simply be proportional to it by Young's modulus. Then that holds true whether we're at this point, we're at this point, this point, or even if we go beyond the elastic zone, this equation will still hold, hold true. And the way you would compute the elastic strain is essentially you would draw a set of um, uh, parallel tr triangles. So here is the triangle for the uh, elastic region. Then when you're up in here, of course, you draw a right triangle with a slope that's parallel to this one. And you could do that anywhere on this graph, really. Um, and the part that is at the base of this right triangle essentially represents the elastic portion of the strain. So we would do that over here and um, draw this triangle like this. This would be parallel. and we would compute right here the elastic portion of strain. So to do that, we would just use that our basic equation, and the elastic strain would equal the stress, that would be the stress here, divided by Young's modulus. Now, uh, it's a little bit ambiguous what Young's modulus is, uh, because of this, you know, real data set and this sort of funky region down here, but I'm going to just approximate it, and this is going to be very different than the value that we used in the last problem. Um, so I don't know. I'm just going to pick anywhere in here. So 200 divided by whatever this is. So this looks like it's about. This is 0 0.5. I'd call this 0.05. I'd call this. 0.03, so 200 megapascals divided by 0 0.03 as a strain, and let's see how might I work with that. So two, two, so that's roughly 20,000 divided by three is on the order of six something. Is it six close to seven? Sixty seven. Um, um, six thousand by three. Six thousand. Um, boy, it's late. I'm not, not good at math at night. Six thousand megapascals. Does that look right? or about 6.7 gigapascals, which is fairly low for what this material likely is, but we're just going to work with it for the sake of this problem. So uh, to compute this, we take 
we'd use this equation here. So I'm, I've run out of space. I'm going to move on to the next uh, slide. I've got um, elastic equals sigma over the modulus, and we've established that this value is about 6,700 megapascals. So we know that the stress, the graph before, actually I don't know what it is. Um, hold on a sec. So this is um, the graph. The stress at fracture is on the order of, what is this? So about, that's not a great line, but I'm going to call that uh, three, 350 megapascals. And I'm going to say divide that 350 megapascals by 6,700 megapascals. And you can see that these two terms cancel. We lose zero. So we got 35 over 670. The elastic strain appears to be, this is nearly half. I'm going to call that, um, uh, okay, I'm just doing this in my head. It's, I'm going to call it 0.4. Um, Eight because this, this is very close to that uh, 0 0.048 no 0 0.048 excuse me late night math not good At 0 0.048 and so the total, which is 0 point, looks like 57, equals the plastic plus the elastic, 0 0.048. So we see that um, it recoils probably this much, and we know that the original length is... Um, factored into the strain is the delta L over the original length. So 0 0.048 is delta L over 50 millimeters. So what we get for delta L is um, uh, 50 times this, which I'm, I'm doing this live, so you'll have to forgive me for the estimation. So I'm going to take out times 10, that'll be, be 0.48 times 5, so it's about, it's like half of 5, what is that, 2 point, uh, we're going to call it 2.5 millimeters, about 2.5 millimeters. If you had a calculator, this would probably be a lot more accurate, but I'm just giving, showing you how this. it's on the order of 3 millimeters uh, in terms of the the amount that sprung back.